The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rose. Good day, folks. Welcome to the August 5th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. It just passed, well, it's just past 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening at the normal time slot, we'll try to make today's show as pertinent as we can. Absolutely. But if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send it early. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And if you'd be kind enough. To put radio show question in that subject, and that would be great. And of course, inside our Tigers Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got U.S. equity futures for the most part traded higher, pointing higher. The Dow's up 67, NASDAQ is flat. The ES Mini is up four points. Russell's up two. Over in Asia last night, it was a sea of green. You had the uh, Shanghai. That uh, finished up 39 points, a little over 1%, 9 tenths for the Nikkei, 243 points, uh, about 1%, 1 percent, 1 tenth of a percent for the uh, Hang Seng, 27 points over in Australia. Uh, it's in to see the uh, S&P 200 finished higher by about a half a percent. Over in Europe, you've got a mixed bag. FTSE is trading off by six points. That's flat. And the uh, DAX is up eight points. That, too, is flat. Gold's off three bucks. Silver's down three cents. Platinum is up 14 pennies. Palladium's up 19. Copper futures are up uh, 7 cents out there. Lightspeed crude is back 26 pennies, trading at 88.27. Does look like it wants lower price. Natural gas back 12 cents. She's printing out at $8, almost even, Stephen. A 30-year treasury of 14 ticks, 143.08. So what's all that stuff mean out there? Well, let's go take a look at, uh, first of all, international markets. Well, it is Jobs Friday. So what do we expect? If there's going to be fireworks, and there can be fireworks, after the jobs report, first uh, Friday of every month is released, uh, and that is at 8.30. So we'll be live. We'll be able to take a look at what's going on. I'll try to make sure I have as many uh, charts closed down as we can in case there's a lot of activity out there. But we'll see what kind of impact. Of course, what we want to do here is look for any kind of early tells as to how the market may respond. So if we just take a look at what went on overseas, let's uh, change screens out there. I see I didn't do a very good job of that. Let me move over here. We'll look at this white background screen. So if you take a look at the Shanghai, what did it mean that the Shanghai closed up uh, 39 points, a little over 1%? Well, there's an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. It has not completed, even though it did generate a bullish hammer candle yesterday, follow through today. At this stage here, it looks like what price is going to go do is target that 33.97 level. That's its oscillator and change line. If you look at the Hang Seng, it also has an A to B equals CD to the downside. Price is tested or tested that red oscillator and change line. So as long as price remains below it, and it's just slightly below that right now, the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside should continue. The DK closed above TD9 count break out a breakdown resistance at 28.044. It's got one more area left that it needs to tackle, and that's its TD9 count top. From June the 9th, that means a close about 28, 389.75 for the Nikkei, which suggested it wants lower price. In the case of the DAX, it has an A to B equal CD pattern that is underway, has not completed it. The one to one takes us up into about the 14.020 ish area out there. Did get a uh, bearish shooting star candle yesterday, but that's just kind of interesting. It doesn't complete a pattern. Now, the FTSE chart here, straight out of 74.39, uh, my data feed's not updating for the FTSE nor is it for the U.S. dollar index out there. But uh, what we can see is that the FTSE uh, negated a uh, TD9 count uh, pattern. It did that yesterday. And uh, 
Um, so that's suggesting that price wants to make move for its breakdown level at 76.17. The U.S. dollar index has got a nice roads momentum indicator top. Price is uh, testing or holding the bottom of its daily profile. The euro, which formed a roads momentum indicator bottom, has just been trading sideways, so not a lot, not a lot of information there. And you've got the Japanese yen did complete a TD nine count bottom. That suggests a run for its uh, oscillator and change line 135. Uh, 13. So that's what's going on overseas. That's what its activity from last light from last evening meant. Now let's go take a look at what a uh, what what what's going on with regard to today's futures uh, for the U.S. markets out here. So to do that, let's switch over to a couple of uh, charts out here. Let's go to this one, which will show us the daily time frame for the ES, the NQ, the YM, and the Russell 2000. So what do we know? We know that uh, there's the potential. Well, first of all, there's an A to B equal CD pattern that is underway. Any bearish reversal candle, today would be an easy day to do that for the ES Mini. Yesterday was a doji candle. So all it has to do basically is close lower on the day. We'll get a bearish engulfing candle. That would then confirm a sell the D point. If we do get that, I don't know if we will or we won't. Uh, if we do get that, then that would suggest that price would pull back to 4066. At least that would be the first target out there. In the case of the NQ, it has actually made a higher high today. We have not taken out yesterday's high inside the ES Mini. We have not done that inside the Dow, and we have not done that inside the Russell. But we have inside the NQ. And what that does is that triggers bar number eight, or potentially triggers bar number eight of a TD9 count. In order for today's bar to complete as bar number eight, price must close above bar number four's close. Bar number four close was 12,980 and a quarter. Now, a TD9 count has to complete bar number nine. That says on Monday, that the NQ would need to close above bar number five. That close is 12,920 and a quarter. If either of those don't happen, this uh, pattern will go away. And what will remain is just simply the A to B equals CD pattern that requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. Short of that, price should continue to move higher. In the case of the Russell 2000, we can see that price has made its way up to a natural area of resistance where price had broken down recently. Now it's at the 1919 level. Uh, it also has the A to B equal CD pattern. It was a doji candle that formed yesterday. Pretty easy for it to uh, generate a bearish reversal candle today. Uh, if it doesn't, then it makes a higher high. Then it brings in the TD9 count. So that's what's going on on the daily time frame. Let's go take a look at what's going on on the 30-minute time frame. And then we can switch over and take a look at, well, I'll tell you what we'll do is uh, let's go look at the 30-minute charts out here. That's probably going to take us into break. So as you look at the 30-minute charts in the ES Mini, that's the upper left-hand side. What you will see is a TD9 count bottom that formed, and it formed at what, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 7.30? It was at 7 o'clock this morning, the bar following bar number 9. Now price is above its green oscillator and change line. So price should take on, and it is taking on, the resistance area of its 30-minute uh, profile. And that's a bearish structure resistance area. And that has resistance in the levels of 41.59, to, or 4151 to 40, I take that back, 4159 to 4160. Let's just call it 4161. And if price can get above that, then what price should do is go target its breakdown level. That breakdown level would be 4163 and a quarter. What price really needs to do, you'll see a number of different eight counts. In fact, uh, let me just simply open up and expand the chart out here. So if you look at the ES Mini, you've got resistance right here. Right here is 7 o'clock in the morning, and that was on August 4th. That was yesterday. TD9 count, Roadsman, Dominicator top. Then you get another TD9 count pattern that forms out here at the top. That one's at 2300 hours. That was last night. Price needs to take both of those out to suggest that we're going to run to higher highs out there. Otherwise, you've got a couple topping signals in place for the 30 minute ES. Sea Roads with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. of booming inflation, the purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. DFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. There's going to be a scheduling change. It's effective on uh, Monday. Uh, Larry Pesavento and I are going to swap shows. Uh, Larry's going to do the 1 to 2. I'll uh, switch into the 11 to uh, 12 uh, show out there. So uh, that's the effective uh, Monday uh, morning out there. So uh, obviously tune into both. Let's uh, go to a couple questions that have come in before we get that uh, jobs uh, date out there. That could create some fireworks. Uh, so let's go to the first question that came in. This was inside the Tiger's Den. This was from uh, Jack F. And Jack wanted to take a look at EOG. I believe Jack is looking for an entry point into it. So let's take a look at the uh, chart patterns out here. So when we take a look at the daily time frame, what this did generate was a nice uh, Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. It uh, did, and it was a TD9 count bottom as well. So the TD9 count bottom took effect on July 14th. The Rhodes Momentum uh, signal uh, confirmed on July the 15th. Now, what we have out here is a price was able to get above its bearish structured daily profile. You see that, uh, Jack, out there? And it was above that for more than two sessions. Quite frankly, it was for about four or five sessions. If it was just a counter trend move to the downside, then EOG should have found support where it did, not yesterday, but the day before at the center of that bearish structured profile at the 102.51 level. Yesterday's price closed below that and below its oscillator and change line suggests a run at support. So what that really means or what you're looking here then, what you're looking at as a potential entry point for EOG is really that swing point low. That was what, July 14th, I believe it was? Uh, July, yeah, July 14th. Now I'm gonna just go take a look at my other charts out here, just easier for me to look at the volume. 5.58 million shares, Jack, on that day. So as price pulls back, yes, it was 5.7 million shares. You want to see price at least tag 95.66. That's the top of that candle. Close back above it and do it with less than 5.5 million shares out there. Um, now, price might get down to 93.64. That's the bottom of that profile. But you still want to see it close back above that swing point to then generate a potential buy signal out here but you know what what that really sets up is maybe this is just a consolidation pattern so don't let uh, you know don't don't get too far ahead of yourself out there that yes uh, yesterday's yesterday should have held support it did not hold support well it did hold the key level support you were looking for so EOG likely headed back towards that 9364 area as we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here I don't have any kind of signal of a bottom 
I don't have that in the case of the monthly chart either out there. So we'll just pay attention to the daily. So, Jack, I hope that helps you out. That's what I would be looking at, that July 14th swing point on a further move lower. Uh, let's go to the next question that came in. This is from John inside the Tiger's Den. John wanted to take a look at the uh, Dr. Copper. So let's get those uh, charts up on the uh, screen. Uh, where are we at here? Here we go. So you'll see our multi-panel set of charts out there. So in the case of uh, copper for the monthly time frame, uh, you can see that nice bullish hammer candle that formed last month. Now, not at any pattern completion or anything along those lines, but it did tell you that copper was trying to form a, uh, at least buyers are trying to form a bottom out there on that monthly chart. If we look at the weekly chart out here, uh, we do have, we do have an A to B equals CD pattern that ha that did complete. And, well, let me see here. That hammer candle low, 327. That close, 323. I take that back. So we don't have a confirmed by the D point. We do have that, we do have the, we do have the A to B equals CD pattern. So A to B looks like this. Here's A to B right down to uh, that level. We can see there was more than a one-to-one -one move um, out there. And what we were looking for was a bullish reversal candle. And there was that hammer candle, but we did get a close blow it the following month. So it does not have a confirmed by the D point. Does not mean that price can't uh, rally. And the rally would take us up to the 375 level out there. That's that red oscillator and change line. You can see how price has been below that level. So if there were to be a close above that, John, that would be a positive outcome out here. As we look to the uh, daily time frame charts for high-grade copper out there, uh, what do we see? Well, the thing that we really see the most is a TD9 count top. And uh, probably the daily chart out here, John, the one that's going to help you the most. Why? Because that TD9 count top has resistance at the price point of $3.597 to be exact. We're trading at 3.576. If price closes above that TD9 count top, that will then generate an A to B equals CD to the upside. That will then also generate a target zone of $4.46. That is the TD9 count breakdown level. So whereas the monthly chart is uh, kind of, eh, I don't know what the signal is here, and the weekly chart is, eh, I don't see much of a signal there, the daily, if it takes out that TD9 count top, tells us that we had higher. Now that had higher, where I would look at, would be that red oscillator and change line on the weekly time frame, $3.75. And just above that is the top of the profile at 380. So that becomes the uh, resistance zone should price close above that TD9 count. So I hope that helps you out, uh, John or Z, inside the Tiger's Den. If not, uh, please uh, let me know what else I can uh, assist with. Next question coming in from Hector and Patty, uh, coming in by email out here. So let's uh, read their question, which is about Google. So let me get over to the uh, charts here. I think I've got that already up on our screen and read the question. Hey, Steve, oh, happy, fabulous early bird Friday. Back at you, my friend. Google on a weekly close above 120.43 confirms an A to B equals CD to the upside? Question mark. No, does not. If we look at the weekly time frame chart for Google out here, we'll just simply expand this out. What we don't have is, uh, so the return, you know what I'll do is, let's just switch charts here. It's going to be easier for you to see because uh, I can draw that pattern in. So give me a moment. We'll switch over to the weekly time frame chart here for Google. All right, so we take a look at the weekly chart for Google. First of all, the A point would be pretty clear for us. That would be the low that we see on the charts out here. That's the low from the week that began May 23rd. The B point would be the high that follows. That's from the week that uh, uh, began July 4th. And then the C point would be the lowest low that occurred after that. That takes us back to last week. When we take a look at that retracement out here, that's an 86% retracement. And once retracements get below 0.782, it really loses its luster as an A to B equals CD pattern. Even if this were to be, Hector, it only gives you a 1-1 price projection at 122.99. So, no, it's not an A to B equals CD pattern. What it is, though, as we take a look at the weekly chart, at least what sticks out to my eyes, is a sideways consolidation pattern out here. So Google's just in a sideways consolidation. That says you typically sell the top of the consolidation. So that's going to be at that 120.65 area out here. And you would buy the bottom of the consolidation. And that's towards last week's uh, low in the 104-ish range out there. Now, the uh, daily time frame chart price is trading above the uh, top of its bearish structure daily profile. So any counter trend move to the downside should find support at 112.86 if Google is going to maintain any kind of uh, bullish ways out there. So now let's go back to um, now what this does have on a weekly basis. It does have a buy the D point pattern. So it did form a nice bottom there. And what that looked like. So here's the A to B equals CD for that. Our A point 
is the high from January 31st. Our B point is going to be the low from February 21st. And the C point is going to be high. This is the week that began March 28th. Now, see, that's only a 70% retracement out there. So it qualifies with what we're looking at. And then uh, that was confirmed with this nice bullish hammer candle. Uh, that was the uh, week that began May 23rd. So you do have a confirmed by the D point pattern for the daily. You've also got for the weekly. You've also got it for the daily. You can see that nice bullish hammer candle. And what uh, that was the one that formed on May the uh, 24th out there. So Hector and Patty, no A to B equals city of the upside from the weekly standpoint. Just a consolidation out there. And you want to watch that 120 65 level. We get back from this breakout here. We've got a caller on the line. It's Robert in Kansas. We're going to go take a look at the energy sector, the XLE. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got uh, Dow equity futures up 87, the NASDAQ futures up 21, the SP futures up 7. It is 8 30 in the morning. We are recording this show between 8 and 9. If you're listening in live, we're going to make it as pertinent as we can for your day. Uh, so we do have the jobs report uh, numbers that are just being released. But let's go to our first caller. That's Robert in Kansas City. Robert, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Happy Friday, Steve. Thanks for Thank taking you. my call. Sure. My, my I, uh... pleasure. I have a question about XLE. I hopefully you haven't covered it in your segment so far. I have not, so uh, fire away. Okay, I don't currently have a position in XLE, but I'm interested in it. But I just needed some guidance on uh, where do you think this is headed when you look at a, a daily or a, a, a weekly chart? Was was the kind of all time top in back in? Uh, you know, a couple of months ago, and I'm not looking at, I'm not in my front of my computer, so I don't know the exact sure. date, but are we sure. kind of on the 
uh, the C to the D leg down on a bigger A, B, C, D down, or do you think this is a minor retracement and we're heading higher? So and great again, question. I'm looking at the daily and weekly chart. Okay. We will look at the daily and weekly chart, but the way I'm going to first answer your question is to look at the yearly chart. Something that we exactly. rarely do. Now, now, it always pops up on my screen, but I don't really focus too much time on it during the show unless it's really pertinent. So the very first thing is we open up the yearly chart here for the XLE, Robert. What we should all notice is that price is trading above last year's high. When you trade above last year's high for any instrument out there, it tells you you're in a bullish market. So... Not that that not that that couldn't have been a major top, which was you know also into one of your questions. But right now, the XLE is in a bullish mode, and that's coming from the weekly chart. And so I would first answer the question: This is more likely just a counter trend move to the downside. So any questions about the yearly chart before we go take a look, dive down into monthly, weekly, daily, and anything else? Do you, so I'm, I typically don't. I don't even know if I have a yearly chart available to me. That's a big number. Do you do you have that? Do you kind of reach that same uh, conclusion when you look at a, a the monthly chart as well? Um, no. So I've, I've, I'm first just trying to give you the larger the okay. larger okay. overview, right? Because your you, question you is: bet. is this is this just a, a counter trend move to the downside? Or was it a major top out there? So the first thing I want to put in perspective is at least from a weekly or from a yearly standpoint, the XLE is an all-out bullish mode out there. We don't have many instruments um, that are trading above last year's highs, Robert. So, you know, this is certainly a strong area and a reason why you would be taking a look at putting a, a long position in. So that's the first thing. The second thing, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it does have a TD9 count top out there. So you ask, is a potential that, uh, that that was a significant top. If price were to close below 51.66, and I would say the answer to that was likely yes out there. We're trading at or close yesterday at 71.66. So you have that TD9 count top. That took place in the month of uh, June. And, uh, and then price pulled back and tested and rejected that green oscillator and changed on. As long as price remains above that line, that closed yesterday at 68.48, it's still bullish out there. Now, because that's a level of support, what you look to is some type of bottoming signal for the lower time frames, like weekly or monthly. But before I go over, I mean weekly or, or daily, before I move on to the weekly chart, Robert, any questions about the monthly? No, no, oh, that was helpful. Actually, I don't, you, you, actually, I don't think you, you can't see. You said you, you don't see your computer, so you probably can't see us. So I probably should stop asking you that question. Uh, but, no, uh, I'm going to go back and listen to the archive and get my computer in front of me, but I'm just not at a position where I can look at it right now. Sure, sure, sure. No problem. So the weekly time frame chart, what's the weekly time frame chart communicating to us? Well, there is a new weekly profile. And what that does is that for first, you've got a, a road's momentum indicator top out there. At price closed through the fir, or below the first level of support. That was a profile that had formed the week that began June 17th. But there is a new profile that is in place right now. It is a bullish in structure. If price were to close below 68.26 on a weekly basis, Robert, that would then be telling us that price is going to go retest its recent lows, the lows from July 15th, or could head back to 54.26. But right now you've got uh, significant support at 68 and a quarter. So if you were to ask me where is a likely buy point out here, I would say that 68.26 level would be an area to be looking. On a daily time frame, so as the chart here closes up, I can see there's a lot of activity going on on my screens. So there we go. So now on a daily time frame, what did we get? The XLE, the energy sector, formed a TD9 count top. It did it on the day of July 29th. Price yesterday closed below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. This suggests that price is going to go tag its breakout area at 69.66. So the buy zone or the potential buy zone out here would be between 68.26 and 69.66. And of course, if price were to close below 68.26, that probably says step back, take a small loss, and let's uh, you know let's let's re let's let's relook at the uh, charts out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily. In summary, the yearly chart says that this is in bullish breakout mode. The monthly chart says even though you've got a TD9 count top, price held support. The weekly chart says I've got a new level of support that is so far held at 68.26. Uh, and the daily says price might get back to the 69.66 level. Not that it can't get below that, but those are the current price targets out there. Robert, does that seem to answer your question for you? I still believe that this is just a counter trend move to the downside. Uh, yeah, so you you nailed it right there. Thank you so much. And I don't know if you have questions lined up. If you do, you can you 
feel free to you're, pass on this one, or maybe you take it next week. But no, nope, you're on the phone. You're on the phone. FCX, the uh, the big miner. Yeah. Let's take a look at its chart. So, with regard to FCX, uh, there, there's going to really do two things that you want to do when you're when you are trading FCX, you are trading the Australian dollar. Uh, the okay. correlation. We've done this many many times. The correlation, it, it's not exact. It's just short of exact out there. So, yes, you're trading the uh, mining materials that it has, but you really have to pay attention to get a good grip on what FCX is doing is to take a look at the Australian dollar. In other words, this formed on a daily basis. FCX formed a nice roads momentum indicator bottom and TD9 count. It did that on July 14th, very similar to the energy sector out there, I think, that we took a look at or, or some other instrument that, that I looked at. So July 14th had a nice bottom pattern in there. Uh, I'm going to guess, based on the way that uh, we're looking at this, is that the Australian dollar probably bottomed uh, on that same day out here. No. What we had was a, a nice A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That still is not completed out here. The price is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. If you're looking for an entry point in FCX, this is irrespective of us taking a look at the Australian dollar. That answer would be between, from a daily pers daily standpoint, between 27.45 and 28.09. 2809 is the bottom of its daily bullish structured profile. So that's the likely target area. As far as where FCX is trading in the pre market right now, I'll see if I can get over to that and type that in. So again, we're saying 2809 is one potential buy point. FCX in the pre market, yeah, that, uh, that 830 jobs report has just got my system a little bit uh, clouded here. Now, what we have on a uh, FCX on a weekly basis. We've got a nice completed A to B equals CD to downside, but I don't have a bearish or bullish reversal candle. So I'd really like to see that in order to be able to call a, a bottom. And the monthly chart for FCX uh, does not have a bottom pattern either and is suggesting that over time it wants to head lower. But you've got the nice bottom on the uh, daily time frame. And so from a trading standpoint, and I still don't know where it's trading at in the pre-market, my apology, Robert, it would be between 27.45 and 28.09. Does that... Answer, and then the resistance, what I'd be looking for, is around the 32 through 33 level. If price can overcome that, then you would want to stay with that trade. But that would be the, the next resistance point up top if, in fact, it does move higher. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. You have a great Friday. You too. Thanks so much. That was Robert in uh, Kansas. We had a couple of requests inside the uh, Tiger's Den as well to take a look at some instruments. Let's go to those. The first one from Dan, which was O'Reilly Automotive, O-R-L-Y. So we're going to a break right now. As soon as we get back, we'll take a look at where O'Reilly Automotive is looking to head. And we'll look at uh, the GDXJ for SNP inside the Tiger's Den. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295 and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, first uh, reaction to the uh, job numbers out there, you can see that equity futures have uh, taken a leg to the downside. Dow futures right now down 140 points. NASDAQ off 124. Uh, S&P off 29. We'll take a look at what that means. You've also had gold trade lower, gold and silver. Gold down 15 bucks right now. Silver off, silver off 34 cents. Uh, light speed crude is basically flat out there. And the 30-year treasury off uh, 1.17 ticks, one and a half points of downside. Uh, trading out at 142.06. But let's go uh, finish taking a look at the requests that are in there, and then we'll go take a look at the uh, the multi time frame charts for the equity futures contracts, get a feel for what they are likely going to uh, do out here. So let's take a look at O'Reilly Automotive. This is for Dan inside the Tigers. Den. O'Reilly Automotive two days ago confirmed a sell the D-point pattern. It did that when it generated that uh, bearish engulfing candle. It also was a wave number seven pattern out there, at least by my counting. And uh, that uh, brings up the fact that uh, Basil uh, Chapman has a uh, all-day workshop, I believe between nine and two, uh, this coming Wednesday the 10th. So I do encourage everybody to go over to the homepage at tfn.com and sign up for it. Uh, great tools out there, uh, well worth the investment. So that's that wave number seven top. Uh, that we've got and uh, now what price needs to do if there's going to be any kind of traction to the downside dan is price must close below that green oscillator and change line a green oscillator and change line tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero those are bullish conditions now wait a minute stevie you just said that there was a top i did so what we have is a neutral condition price is above the top of its daily profile above that oscillator and change line uh, and we have a top now if price takes out that high that high by the way from two days ago for O'Reilly Automotive was and is uh, 712.63. If price gets above that, then price heads back to its most recent highs. As we take a look at the weekly chart, you can see that Rhodes momentum indicator top from April, and that could take you into the 748 level. Short of that, if price does close black, green, oscillator, and change line, Dan, then you're looking to move back to the 691 area. That's the top of its daily profile. That would be the first level of support. Weekly chart looks very positive out here, no topping pattern. Uh, that is in play and says it wants to head back to those recent highs. The uh, monthly chart also looks bullish. Um, um, yeah, it just simply looks uh, bullish out there. But it's a daily time frame chart to continue to watch. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Dan, with regard to O'Reilly Automotive. S&P inside our Tiger's Den, you're, uh, you're targeting uh, 678. 678, well, that'd be that bottom of that uh, daily profile, Dan. So, um, so we got one step at a time. You got 691.93, 683.05, and then 674.17 would be your target levels to the downside. But you really want to see that green daily, that daily green oscillator and change line fail. Otherwise, it's a real suspect for a, a short trade out there. So GDXJ is another instrument. This is from SNP. He wanted to take a look at that. That's the uh, junior miners out there. Uh, I imagine they're getting hit just a tad with gold off uh, 18 bucks right now. Uh, let me see, uh, XJ. Um, and it, it's just there's so much uh, activity right now going through the uh, system here, my system, uh, that it's just taking just a tad longer to um, 
uh, to get our to, to get the uh, charts out here. So we take a look at the GDXJ. Right now, it's trading. The last trade fired up at 33.51. One before that, 33.63. So uh, and you close at 3406. So no no major damage there. What you'd want to watch here on the GDXJ, it does have a uh, profile uh, where both the bottom. I take that back. 3220, 3220 is a key level of support. If price were to close below that S and P, then you're taking a look at a run for 3123. And really, if it's going to do that, I would say it's likely going to go tag it, go tag the uh, swing point from July 14th out there. And that high is 3019. And the volume out there was 12 million shares. If it does that, you certainly want to see price moving back with less than 12 million shares out there. But otherwise, as long as support holds, then what you should see is price make a run for the 3721 level. That's a daily TD9 count breakdown area. But first, you've got to get price. And it did calls above it yesterday. And that's the top of its profile. I didn't mention that to you. That was 3392. So you'd like to see a secondary close above that. Now, on the weekly chart, you can see how price ran into resistance. And that was at that red oscillator and change line. So closing above that this week would be a real positive. That is 3428. If it doesn't, eh, it's suspect and says, Watch 3220. So that's what I see when I take a look at the GDXJ charts out there. So I do hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for the request. Now let's go take a look at the uh, multi time frame charts here for a couple of the equity future contracts. Let's go take a look at the uh, start with the ES Mini. So in the case of the ES Mini, as you know, we mentioned here on a daily time frame, uh, what we're looking for, there's an A to B equals CD pattern. Now if this were the session close, then we would have a confirmed sell the D point. Why? Because you would have a three river evening star pattern formation. Unfortunately, at 847 in the morning, it's too early to call what the end of day looks like. But if we do get a bearish reversal candle at the end of the day for the ES Mini, that is then going to suggest a retracement back to 4059. That is its green oscillator and change line. If price holds that level, then that would be the next buy point for going long the S&P 500 or the ES Mini. If that level fails, then the next area to take a look at would be as price gets back to 4030. 4030 is the top of the daily profile. If price closes below 4030, then we're looking for a run to 3936 or 3960. If you look at that 30 minute chart out there, you can see the jobs report came out uh, about 18 minutes ago. You can see a nice wide range of bar to the downside. So now we've got to say, well, where are things headed to? Well, if we look at the 60 minute time frame chart, which had a nice roads momentum indicator top, price is now below its support level, the, bot the bottom of that TAS profile. And that was at 4148. That suggests that it wants to go target 4092. We're trading at 4110. The 120 minute time frame chart also has a Rhodes momentum indicator and a TD9 count top. Price is below support. It's suggesting 4092.50. So we got two uh, for 4092.50. The four hour time frame chart says, yeah, maybe that's where I want to go, but really maybe I want to at least spike down to 4084.50. And that is the bottom of its breakout. That is its breakout, TD9 count breakout level which is the same for the five hour time frame chart. So this is pretty cool. We got this wide ranging bar moving down. We're trying to understand where is a level of support. We've got the 4092.50 level. And if that area fails, we've got 4084.50. And if that area fails, we have trouble in River City. But really that trouble in River City would say price should just go target that daily green oscillator and change length the 4059 area. So we know where price is likely headed to. And uh, you'll be able to uh, know whether it did at 149 in the afternoon or not by looking at uh, some intraday charts here for the ES Mini. Let's go see what the NQ charts are signaling to you and I. So let's pull those up. And the NQ charts are telling us what? Well, same kind of situation. We take a look at the 30-minute bar out there. And so where is price headed to? Well, on a 30-minute basis, 12, 989.50 could be a number. Um, the daily time frame, by the way, the green oscillator and change line is uh, really right at the center of its bearish structure daily profile. And so if price does get back below the top of the profile, which is 1310875, a move down to 12,797.73 would be in order. Now we look at the 60 minute time frame chart out here, its breakout here is a 12,892. If we look at the 120 minute time frame chart, it's got a nice TD9 count top, Rhodes momentum indicator top. As long as price remains below 13,184, 12,892 becomes its number. On the four-hour time frame chart, what do we have? Not much, but price is below its profiles. This suggests 12820. And on the five-hour time frame chart, there we've got wave number seven. That's letter G out there. Uh, price is below profile. Well, I take that back. It's above profiles. Profiles are well below price out there. So 12867. So where's the NQ headed to? The first level of support. 
is the top of that daily profile. That's the first area to be watching. That's 13, 13, 108.75. Watch 13, 108.75. If you get below that, then we're likely headed to the 12, 797 area. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, uh, folks. We are recording today's show. It's uh, 8.54 in the morning. We're recording early. If you're listening at 1 o'clock, thanks so much for doing that. Again, on uh, Monday, uh, we're uh, making a, a programming change. Larry Pesavento is going to slide over to the 1 to 2 slot. Uh, that's a slot that the Trader's Edge show has been uh, using. And I'll go ahead and take the uh, morning slot between 11 and uh, noon. So we'll be flipping that, and that is effective on uh, Monday. So you got uh, the uh, initial reaction so far from the uh, jobs numbers. Uh, you got all U.S. equity futures trading to the downside. We're going to watch at day's end for any kind of bearish reversal candles. Those would confirm sell the D point patterns and suggest a further move back. Yeah, Dow futures right now down 215, S&P off 43, Nasdaq down 186. Gold is taking a move as to silver to the downside. Gold's off 20 bucks, silver down 48 pennies. Those are the charts we're going to go move over to right now to take a look at where price may be headed there. So we'll get to our multi time frame charts for the uh, gold contract. What we'll see is that price has first hit its first level of potential support. And that was at 1785.10. 1785.10 is the 60 minute TD9 count breakout level. If we see price move below 1785.10, then its message will be, and I'll give you these numbers, 1776.70, 1779.40, 1780.50, 1770. That would be the target range. Now, if we look at the daily time frame chart, I'll just simply expand this chart out. What the daily time frame did yesterday was it negated a TD9 count top, indicating that it wanted to rally further. 
I don't know what the end of day is going to look like for Goldilocks. But if this were the end of the day, yesterday was a negation of a TD nine count top suggesting higher price. And today would be a dark cloud cover candle giving us a sell the D point pattern. And that would suggest price pulling back to the 1754, 1758, 1773 area. But again, it is uh, early in the uh, trading session. And that first level of support, 1785.10, is what's being tested. Now, that's just a level of support. I don't have any kind of bottoming pattern or signal, whether it's for a 30-minute time frame. Now, there's a big A to B equals CD to the downside pattern, but that's such a wide-ranging bar. The chances of getting a bullish reversal candle off of that in the uh, pursuing half hour is uh, very unlikely out there. So, folks, thanks so much for joining us. I'll look forward to seeing you on Monday at 11 o'clock with the uh, programming changes. And stay tuned right now. you got Tommy O'Brien up next with the morning market kickoff and you're listening at one it's your favorite polar bear david white have a fantastic weekend and i'll see you on monday take care folks you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts you might find that it's not so impossible after all for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices selective stocks and commodities subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com the opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial